So good morning, here we are in South Wales in Newport with Stuart Agnew, who, MEP, who is a farmer. He's also the UKIP spokesman in the European Parliament for Agricultural Affairs and on the Agricultural Committee. And Neil Hamilton, who is the leader of the party in Wales. He's also an Assembly member and the Agricultural Spokesman in Wales. And of course the candidate in the Newport West by-election, which is due to take place Thursday the 4th of April. So good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. morning. Well, it's great to come down to Wales and to speak to you, Neil. Um, I think it's fantastic with the response that we're having here in Newport West. Um, you obviously, we just want to talk about agriculture at the moment. Um, you're, the, you're the Assembly member for um, the responsibility for agriculture, yeah. What do you think needs, are the issues facing agriculture in Wales, Welsh farmers, given obviously if we have a no-deal Brexit, for example? Well, we're massive net importers of food in this country, so there's a big home market waiting to be picked up once we're outside the EU. If the EU is stupid enough to want to impose massive tariffs upon exports from Britain to the EU and vice versa, then it'll be egg on their faces, not on ours. And uh, out of the EU, we can pare down the regulations that tie farmers in knots imposed on them from Brussels. And of course, there's a massive global market in food as well with the world's population expanding India and China economies are growing you know these are massive new markets which countries like New Zealand have been able to take full advantage of but we can't because we can't do trade deals independently of the EU. I'm glad you said that because I was talking to Stuart earlier and he was telling me that uh, Australia and New Zealand can't fulfill their quotas I think that's right. The tariff-free quotas. The tariff-free right? quotas. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us about what export opportunities there are in the Middle East the Far East and so on for Welsh lamb? Well, they're increasing all the time because many countries in, in the Far East are having rapidly expanding economies. Many of them are Muslim countries, so they will not eat pork. And lamb is very popular, so there is a, is a market there. Now, just going back to, to leaving the European Union and agriculture, a lot of Welsh farmers feel rather safe with the EU, but there are three dynamics going on now which make the EU far less attractive to them. The first is big cut in the agricultural budget. Uh, because that is going to finance the new EU army, which we were told during the referam, referendum campaign was a mirage. Nick so, Clegg said that, I think. Yes, he? he did, yeah. Uh, and he called Farage, I don't know, fantasising or something. Uh, um, kind of like the tuition fees. Yeah, well, yes. Uh, so he, he was quite wrong on that. So there's going to be less cash available if we were to stay in the EU. The other thing uh, is that, well, sheep and sheep and beef farmers could easily be sold down the river by something called the Mercosur Agreement, mm. where the EU wants to sell high-tech goods, mobile phones, etc., to Brazil and other South, South American, American countries, countries. Yeah. in return for uh, allowing uh, very easy access of meat products here. And, of course, those meat products have been produced in uh, circumstances and in ways that we would never allow. Uh, this is countries like Argentina and so on with, with yeah, big... Yeah, Argentina, Brazil... Uh, I, I, um, Uruguay and Paraguay, I think, are the four countries in, in Mercosur. And so that thread is hanging over everybody. And then, as Neil said, regulation on agriculture just increases by the three R's. Ruthlessness, remorselessness and relentlessness as each year goes by. And whether, whether it's being uh, uh, how much fertiliser you can use, uh, how long you can keep sheep out in the winter because they may cause muck in the watercourses, etc. And particularly on the products we use for animal health, all come under regulation. And they always tr are trying to make out now the green lobby, such and such a farming product could give you cancer, therefore yeah. we must ban it. And, and with never any idea as to how to replace it. No, what, what Roundup issue you can buy in, in the supermarkets for weed control as a mm. gardener, that's going to be banned now yeah. by the EU. And there is no cancer risk at the concentrations mm. of chemicals that uh, exist in the current o well, uh, over regulation And in time. any argument about glyphosate, mm. I have personally used the concentrated material for years. Yeah often without gloves, often getting the vapour in my face. Yeah. I have been exposed to that perhaps 10,000 still, still times here. more than the average <laughs> yeah. citizen. And you're still with us. I'm 69 years old and I'm still here standing. Ditto. Thank you. And I'm 70. <laughs> so uh, what, what I want to ask you, Neil, is about the balance of trade in agricultural products yeah. between the United Kingdom and um, the European Union. Now, of course, the Dutch, for example, their flower industry, their market gardening industry is very dependent on the UK market. Um, French wine, we know about... German cars naturally but that's not agriculture but going back to agriculture just fruit, fruit and soft fruit from Spain so what do you think producers in Spain the Netherlands France 
They don't want a no-deal Brexit either, do they? No, because they'll be in big trouble if uh, the EU's tariffs are imposed upon exports to, to Britain. Uh, you know, we're about 65% self-sufficient in food products. Some, some uh, uh, more than others, obviously. Lamb, we're in broad balance imports and, and exports, uh, but we import a lot from New Zealand. Uh, lamb is the only sector where there might potentially be some difficulty, but the trade is relatively small in, in size. You know, 300 million pounds is what our exports of lamb are. We're a two trillion pound economy. We give eight billion a year to the EU to spend in other parts of Europe. So we can look after farmers and make sure that they still manage the land without having to have sky high food prices and without giving up our right to an independent trade policy. So I say to farmers, you know, the world is your oyster. 85% of the world economy is outside the EU and that's growing, whereas the EU is not. And of course, under WTO terms, we can trade with the rest of the world, which is something really which Stuart alluded to in obviously the Middle East uh, with a ban on pork, the Far East, Australia, New Zealand not fulfilling, fulfilling their lamb quota. So great opportunity for Welsh lamb, uh, lamb industry there. Um, of I mean, New Zealand yeah. only uses about 70% of its quota. Exactly that, mm. yeah. But what, what's interesting, of course, the Article 50 process had a two year preparation. Um, what do you think, Stuart, about that? Because that's been wasted, hasn't it? Well, the it? whole purpose of that was to resolve these things smoothly so that when we came to March the 29th, uh, April the 2nd wouldn't be much different. But they have wasted that time basically in trying to revisit Brexit. That's really what's been going on. Right. That was always going to be a problem when we realised that whilst the majority of the country wanted to leave the European Union, a considerable majority of MPs, a big majority of Lords and the entire civil service all wanted to remain and these were the people solely responsible for getting us out and as time went by human nature can't be defeated and they started to show their true colours. Well of course Theresa May was always a remainer we know that mm. um, put her in put a a, a, a vegetarian in charge of a butcher shop mm. basically she's kicked, tumbled down to razor has kicked the can down the road and this is the result so nothing to fear from a world trade organization brexit it's established it's been there since the late 1940s out of 192 countries 164 trade on wto terms i think it's a great future for wales and a great future for welsh farmers outside the european union thank you gentlemen thank you very much indeed. thank you thank you If you want to support a return to proper parliamentary democracy and for Britain to unite to make a success of Brexit, join UKIP today. Go to www.ukip.org or phone us on 0333 800 6800.